All right, in this video, I'm going to be talking about 10 big brand name board games um, that I think are either fine or bad. And I'm going to offer some uh, replacement games that I think uh, scratch the same itch uh, and, and or replace them. I'm ordering these based on how willing I would be to play the original big brand name game and going up to ones that I absolutely would not play. Now don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with big brand name like, you know, games that you grew up with, uh, which a lot of these are going to be. Um, it's just that there are so many good games out there that if you like one of these games, you should try maybe the game that I suggest. This is basically uh, what this video is about. Number 10 is a game I actually enjoy. I actually enjoy this game with a few thin little nitpicks, but Scrabble. Uh, Scrabble is a very solid word game, you know, you're, you're making words. I think my biggest gripe with it is because it's you're focused more on, say, hitting certain point spaces, that it's not necessarily about rewarding the coolest word or like the most, you know, unique word, as it is just, oh, I gotta get this letter on this space. That's my biggest gripe with Scrabble. So my alternative game, I would suggest, is a game called Paperback. In Paperback, uh, you are using cards to build words. And with these words, uh, you can then uh, buy better letters for your deck. Not only are you rewarded for having like using more letters and having more interesting words, uh, but as you score points, you'll buy better cards, and some of them have abilities or um, you know, bonuses or wilds, and you're using them to buy even better cards. It's very satisfying in that deck building sort of way, but it's not super complicated because again, you're just basically looking at the cards in your hand and building the best word. I like word games that reward you uh, for kind of using as many letters as you can and uh, using like having like a unique word. Another game along those lines is uh, Letter Tycoon. Uh, Letter Tycoon is a game where uh, you're playing cards in a similar fashion. You're, you're trying to score as many uh, points to buy. In this case, you're buying patents. And what's cool is that if you buy the patent for a letter, anytime somebody uses that letter, you score money. Uh, and then you can use that money on your turn to buy more patents and more things. And some of them, those are special abilities as well. Yeah, both of them really solid uh, word-based card games and ones I would much rather play than Scrabble. Although, Scrabble is a decent game. This is, we're starting nice here. Number nine is a game I have a soft spot for because at the end of the day, it's still a fun game. And that's Battleship. Now, Battleship literally is just guessing spots on a, on a map and seeing if you hit them, which at its base level is still fun. It's, it's very stupid and simple, but it's fun. But if you like Battleship, you should try Captain Sonar. Captain Sonar is essentially real time four on four team battleship uh it's an incredible experience uh, there are four different positions uh there is a captain who is calling out orders to the rest of the crew uh which direction to go and such there is a, a track I, I don't remember the name of the exact positions but there's a guy who is tracking trying to map out where the other team's ship is real time with a map um somebody's doing weapons somebody's you know rearranging the engine uh, all four of you on the team are doing your own tasks while at the same time trying to stay in sync. Meanwhile, you're listening to the other team's directions and trying to track their ship, and you're trying to shoot them in real time. It's extremely tense, extremely fun, and there's this great moment in the game where at any time you can call out to try to shoot them, and it's like, you know, pause, you know, are you at this coordinate? And there's this dramatic pause and you're waiting. Because when you score a hit on the other team, it feels so fucking good. The only disclaimer is that this one's really best 4-on-4. Four four, and it's not easy to get an 8-person board game group together all the time. Especially because you need exactly 8. Uh, but if that's something that you can manage, then Captain Sonar is uh, a wild, unique time. Number 8 is a game that is not a terrible game at its core. It's just plagued by one really bad mechanism. And that's Clue. Clue is a, you know, a decent deduction game, right? You know, you're just figuring out logically and, you know, okay, well, if I have this card, it can't be this person, can't be this murder weapon, etc. 
the only thing that really damns Clue is rolling to move. Rolling a dice to move, having your, you know, turns subject to random luck based on, oh, I roll the one and I'm fucked. That is very bad design. If you want a game that gives you, it's a little more complicated than Clue, but gives you the same deductive, you know, satisfying feeling, I would recommend The Search for Planet X. This is a newer game. I actually did a review, episode 104, in my uh, board game reviews. It's a game where you're basically trying to find the planet, planet X, uh, but you're also trying to figure out uh, the locations of different sort of celestial bodies and such. Uh, throughout the galaxy. Really, really fun, and it's app run as well, which makes the game run even smoother. Uh, you can actually input, like, guesses and commands into the app, and it does it for you. But it's it's a great, tricky little logic puzzle of, okay, if these are these ones are always adjacent to each other, and these ones are always opposite each other. So if this is here, then this has to be here. If you like that kind of clue sort of piecing together like logic like oh this has to be this so i can cross off this the search for planet x is a very meaty uh fun deductive game not too heavy again because the app does a lot of the work for you but it's really really fun now this game replaced another game that i still will mention this game's way heavier way heavier only for the most serious of board game folk and that's alchemists alchemists is a great game as well uh, you're basically wizards or whatever trying to form potions and hypotheses or whatever and you're trying to figure out the exact ingredient combinations of potions and it's an also an app assisted game as well where you're like you can input your guesses and see if you're correct or whatever however it's it's a worker placement game and it's very dense so I would say the general uh, suggestion is still gonna be search for planet X and I think I even like it better uh, even though I think Alchemist is a very good game. They're just very different flavors. If you want a really dense, sort of, like, thinky, like, super complex game, Alchemist is your game. If you want something that's lighter that anybody can play, uh, I think Planet X is good. Because it even has, like, a basic mode and an advanced mode. I recommend the advanced mode, but basic mode is there if you're playing with kids, which is great. Number seven. This is going to be a little controversial, considering it's so beloved but Catan uh, I don't really like Catan very much I appreciate that it's a lot of people's kind of like first step or foray into the you know quote-unquote designer board game space I just think there are so many more fun games that do similar things like resource gathering and whatever and I don't like the dice rolling um, but this is not an exact one-to-one -one, but something that scratches a similar itch because I think what I enjoy the most about Catan is not the dice rolling, but it is like the collecting the different resources, right? And trading them amongst people. Uh, and if you want a game like that that's simpler, there's a card game called Bonanza. Uh, you're basically collecting beans and you're trying to collect groups of beans to score, but there's a lot of trading involved. And there's also this really fun mechanism of where you can't arrange, rearrange the cards in your hand which can be very mind-fucky when you first uh, experience it, but uh, it's a very clever idea. It's always full of tough decisions, and the trading is very crucial. So, again, if you like Catan for the sort of, you know, trading to get exactly what you need, that sort of mechanic, uh, I think Bonanza is, will be up your alley. Uh, it's, a, it's a very fun, kind of light card game, but it has very uh, critical decisions you have to make. Number six... Cards Against Humanity. I, I really would be hard-pressed to be convinced to play a game of Cards Against Humanity at this point. Same thing with Apples to Apples. Yeah, it's overdone. If you like Cards Against Humanity, though, you may like Say Anything. In fact, I think Say Anything is way better. Say Anything is essentially Cards Against Humanity, but you have, like, questions, and then everybody can write anything. Uh, it's just marker boards. Uh, you are free to write whatever you want, uh, and then you judge your favorite answer based off what people write. It's obviously much harder than Cards Against Humanity because you have to think of stuff instead of relying on ha ha, oh, the offensive card. Cool. Um, nope, you actually have to be creative and use your brain in this game. Number five, Risk. 
This is a game I've got kind of a soft spot for because I had good memories of playing it growing up, but really the biggest problems with Risk are it's too long and it's based entirely on rolling dice and just getting lucky rolls. And so the game I have to replace Risk, if you like dudes on a map fighting each other, you should try Blood Rage. Blood Rage is a fantastic sort of Viking themed game where you're still dudes on a map and you can but you can get monsters involved and you're you're killing each other and uh, sending people off to Valhalla and like they get you get rewarded for even for death and there's like special powers and stuff. Uh, it's great. It's still a game that offers you the same satisfaction of crushing your opponent and taking their territory. But it's not based on luck. There's card drafting where you have to go, okay, I need to take this card, but oh, I don't want my opponent to get this card, that sort of thing. Uh, and the combat is much more refined than, say, just rolling dice. And obviously the theme is fucking cool. The miniatures are great. If you want that sort of combat, grabbing each other's land, but in a much uh, more well-designed and honestly shorter package, you, then you should check out Blood Rage. It's great. Now, a game I kind of just thought of that if you like rolling tons of dice, this isn't the same thing as, let's say, conquering people's lands because it's a co-op game, but Zombicide Black Plague, if you just like rolling dice and seeing what happens and killing lots of guys, then this is the game for you. I think Zombicide Black Plague, and in fact its sequel, Zombicide Green Horde, which I think is even better, but it's way harder, are fantastic, fun co-op like sort of zombie killing games where you're going around on a, on a little map you're using your abilities and weapons to you know shoot zombies stab zombies and you gotta roll like six dice and see which of how many zombies you kill uh and yet there's also a lot of strategy to the game uh if you like that aspect of risk then i think zombicide is a great uh way to feel cool like haha here's my powerful weapon bam let's see how many guys i kill number four Monopoly. This is a game I also loved as a kid, but again, it's way too long. And also, it's it's just luck. I mean, a lot of it is luck. The real meat of the game, and it's a pretty lean game, is the trading of properties. But even then, you're just kind of waiting till people land on your shit. That's not fun. A game where you, you can kind of score uh, like big for rolls... If you like that sort of like thing or buying things and you know waiting for thing people to roll the right number there's two games I can rec I'm gonna recommend uh, Machi Koro which is a Japanese themed like you're building like a coastal town and it has fun things like oh if on it somebody rolls a five aha my five property triggers uh, and I get like coins or whatever or uh, there are ones that you People have to pay me if, if they roll a three or whatever. You're building like a sort of tableau of uh, numbered uh, properties. And if people roll them, they trigger uh, either on your turn or on their turn or sometimes both. Uh, and you're using the money to buy more properties that will trigger on more dice rolls. Space Base, I think, is the even better version where essentially similar concept. You have this sort of uh, tableau you're building of ships uh it's like one to twelve and you're buying cards to fill up slots on this thing so that whenever somebody rolls a seven even if it's not if it's on your turn or somebody else's turn if somebody rolls a seven you look on your seven ship and see what you get it's co you're constantly getting the satisfaction of oh what do they roll what do they roll aha they roll the nine ah, i get this oh i get this and then on your turn you can use resources you've collected to buy more powerful cards that give you even better rewards on rolls. Um, some of them have really interesting abilities like, oh, swap these two. Or uh, if you charge this card, you can trigger an ability uh, to buy even better uh, cards. Uh, that sort of like feel all feeling of get, gimme, 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 like get more money, get more problems, get more shit and make yourself even stronger and more powerful than Monopoly gives you. Uh, you should play Space Space. Space Space is way more fun than Monopoly uh, and gives you that same feeling of power. We're getting into real kid game territory here, and there's nothing wrong with kid games, but uh, here are some games that if you like those kids games or 
or are nostalgic for them, these are games that give me a similar feeling. Uh, number three is the Game of Life. You know, that classic game of just going, roll, spinning the wheel and going through life and getting little things and cool. Yeah, that's basically all it is. If you like that sort of experience of like, ooh, let's just go through like a journey and see what cool things I collect along the way, uh, you should play Takedo. Takedo is a game where you're going through Japan as a tourist, uh, and you're starting from one end of Japan to the other, and you're going, you're stopping along different spots along the way. And this one has a really clever mechanic where basically you can go as far as you want, but once if you're the farthest ahead, whoever is the farthest behind gets to have a turn. So it's not like each person goes in clockwise order. It always goes based on whoever is furthest behind. So you might want to go, oh, I really want to take this spot and I'll go here. But if you go there, now everybody else can just kind of like take turns until they catch up to you. So it's this really interesting game of like, do I risk it? Like, do I risk going faster ahead so I can grab spaces I know I want, but then give my opponents more turns? Or should I play it slow and hope that they won't grab those spaces? And the spaces are like, you know, getting souvenirs, going to the hot springs, uh, eating food, like, you know, stopping at inns and donating at temples. Like, really, really charming theme, like really beautiful art and uh, just a fun, relaxing game. You're going through scoring points, like you, know, you can collect these like picture cards to collect art, or maybe you wanna score the most for this thing. There's tons of little different scoring mechanisms, and you're just going, hmm, which ones do I wanna do? Also, you have different character abilities that give you different perks. Like some characters might be more, get more benefits for souvenirs, or more benefits for hot springs. Again, really charming game, really beautiful, and uh, gives me the same feeling as life. Like at the end of it, you're like, huh, I did all this stuff and this felt fun and I know I really miss Japan. I really miss going to Japan. Number two, Sorry. This one is tricky because Sorry, at the end of the day, all it really is is just flipping cards or if you're playing Trouble, you're rolling dice and just moving pieces. And for me, yeah, there are games like you know, like Backgammon and stuff, which is still like a classic, kind of like a big name game that have the same sort of landing on pieces thing. So instead of going that route, I was just trying to think, what is fun about those games is the take that element, right? Like, aha, I beat you to this sp space or I, you know, overtook you or something like that. And so I picked a really simple game, just a really kind of stupid game, but I love this game. It's called Can't Stop. Can't Stop is a game where you're basically on your turn, you roll dice, and you're you're picking pairs of dice. Uh, let, let, let's say you pick like three and a nine. Like you roll four dice and you tear them off in the three and nine. And then you move those pieces up on columns on the three and the nine column. All you're trying to do is get your little pieces up to the top. However, you can keep rolling and rolling and rolling, but if you ever roll a thing where it, because you only have three pegs and you pick your three pegs on your turn. But once you roll your dice and you can't move up any of those three pegs, you lose all your progress. So there's this constant push your luck thing of, should I stop? Because if I stop, I can save the places of where the pegs are on the board. And then next turn I can progress from those spots. Or if you're greedy like me, you go, okay, seven's going up high this turn. I think I can reach the top in this turn. Okay, just keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. And then there's either this great satisfaction of, I did it! I roll the seven again, I reach the top. Because once you reach the top, that column is closed off, you score a point. You score three points, you win the game. So it's just this racing, rolling dice and beating people to like, they're like, oh fuck, I almost got to the seven. And you just go, haha, roll, roll, roll and beat them. It's really, really fun. Uh, really stupidly simple, but really fun. So if you like that, sort of take that element and like the simplicity of Sorry, Can't Stop is just as simple. It's just addictive in how how goofy fun it is. So I'll recommend that. And finally, number one, Candyland. This is not a game. Candyland isn't a game. You're, you're just pulling cards and seeing what happens. Now, if you want a game that gives you the fun of like, Let's just roll a dice or flip a card and see what happens. But there's a little more to the game. You should play Camel Up. Camel Up is a game 
where you are watching camels race and there's this and if you get the the new edition there's this beautiful pyramid mechanism like you put the little dice in there and it shoots out dice it's this awesome little toy and presentation wise it's gorgeous but all you're really doing is watching camels move along a track and you're trying to predict which camel is going to win and you're making bets along different points of the race and if you can make accurate predictions early you'll be rewarded more but otherwise it's a really goofy game like the camels can just get into all sorts of antics and it's a it's a very kid-friendly game you're just watching the camels go and again the camels can do crazy things like they can climb on top of each other they can go backwards again just a really goofy time but again if you want simplicity of Candyland, which I don't know if anyone watching this even wants to play Candyland. But if you want to play a game with your kids that's very simple, just kind of like rolling dice and watching fun little camels move, but there's still an element of strategy so you don't go fucking crazy playing Candyland, Camel Up is here for you. It's a very simple game, very charming, very fun. All right, that was 10 big brand board games that suck and 10, or actually more than 10, but 10 replacements for them recommended by me. Feel free in the comments to let me know any other suggestions you have uh, for replacements for games um, that were mentioned here. Uh, and yeah, let me know also what kind of other kind of board games videos you'd like to see, maybe top 10 lists or anything else. I'm always curious to see what you guys are interested in. So let me know in the comments, otherwise I'll see you in the next one. Peace.